Hi there, uh, pre-post fans. Um, we thought we would do a little bonus episode for you guys. Um, the Melbourne International Film Festival has just come and gone recently uh, in Melbourne. Mm. Um, I didn't get a chance to attend, seeing as I'm over in London at the moment, but John did get to see a few films, so we thought we'd uh, mm. just come on and run through some of the highlights of uh, what John saw at the festival, just to give you guys a bit of a taste of some of the more interesting things we've been seeing lately. Um, yeah, that's right. And I think um, it's probably good to say, like, uh, a few of these movies aren't out yet. Some are, some aren't, depending on where mm-hmm. you live. But most of them these days, the good thing about streaming sites is you'll be able to find them somewhere. So, yeah. um, you know, it's worth listening and if i'm just telling you to listen basically <laughs> just don't if, don't if, turn off the podcast whatever don't turn do. it off because i know sometimes these sorts of um film festival uh specials or podcasts can be like well i'm never going to actually see this so what's the point but um i think most of the stuff i've seen anyway will be out in some form so mm. uh i'm gonna go through the uh order that i saw them Matt. yep that um, sounds good. so the the first movie i saw was the overnight uh, yes. And I think this now is I've one... actually seen this. Yes, that's right. You have seen this, and I, I, I think this is one that our listeners would really appreciate. I, I feel like um, this is uh, from uh, not the Duplass brothers, but it's from their wheelhouse of people they work with. Um, mm-hmm. So this is directed by Patrick Bryce, uh, who is a. I think this is his second feature, and his first was uh, the found footage horror movie called Creep, mm-hmm. which was a bit of a stinker, I thought. Yeah, neither of us were uh, fans of Creep. We're no. contrary to popular opinion on that one, I think. That's right. Um, so anyway, The Overnight is uh, a comedy, a darkish comedy, I'd say, about mm-hmm. a, um, these, uh, it's an American film. Um, yeah, so I guess it's, it's about... Uh, Two couples that have have kind of only just met and they get invited around to uh, one of the couple's houses for for just an evening of dinner and drinks because their kids are friends. Um, And the night sort of takes a bit of a turn, I I guess. Like things things get a little uh, weird weird, um, the more alcohol is consumed and people loosen up a little bit. Um, That's right. I don't know how much sort of we want to spoil of the film, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's good not to say too much yeah. more. And that, that's like an interesting premise anyway, you know. It's yeah. like these two couples get together, a lot of alcohol is consumed, and there's a there's this undercurrent of weirdness about one of the couples anyway. Um, and then a bunch of stuff happens that is uh, humorous and uh, interesting. Um, yeah, so and I, it, it- yeah. It, sorry, it kind of it kind of pushes boundaries that a lot of these kind of rom com films mm. don't sort of cross, but it does it in a really earnest and fun way. Uh, so that certain characters that, that could have come off as very weird and creepy are, are mm. utterly charming and lovable in a lot of ways, which I think is quite a feat. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the movie sets up Jason Schwartzman's character as being. A bit unhinged and for a, for a while you're not sure whether the movie's going to take a really sinister turn um and it it hints at that at times but it never fully goes down there and it it, it kind of balances all the characters out really evenly which is a nice nice surprise mm. i mean i we both really really enjoyed this movie yeah. so um this would be a, a high recommendation one of the one of the best movies i saw at miff definitely yeah, it's certainly one of the best uh, sort of romantic comedies, I guess. I guess romantic's maybe not the right word, but... Yeah, like sex comedy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, we just recently did our train wreck episode, and I would much... I much prefer this film. I'd recommend The Overnight. Absolutely, yeah. Much higher than yeah. I would train wreck. And I enjoy train wreck, yes. but this is a lot more interesting. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And, um, and hilarious. You know, on, yeah, I was just going to say, on the comedy front, it is really, really funny as well. Yeah. Film number two okay. on your journey, John. What did okay. You, what did you see next? Uh, I know I'm going to mispronounce this, and it's quite a famous title, but um, uh, Cahill Gibran's The Prophet. Right. So this is an animated feature 
uh, that is kind of like a um, not an anthology, but the there's little segments in it, and each segment is directed by a different animation director, and it's done in a different style of animation. Um, so visually, this is really good and really interesting. If you're into animation, you might recognize some of the directors behind it. Um, Are there some big names in there? Well, the biggest or most obvious that I know of is the kind of the story that's around it that encloses it, uh, that it mm-hmm. keeps coming back to in between all the segments. It's directed by Roger Allers, who directed um, The Lion King for Disney. Oh, right. So wow. quite a, quite a um, you know, big hit there with The Lion King. Um, <laughs> you did pretty well with that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, so it's, o- it's okay. It's um, uh, Cahill Gib- Gibram. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry for anyone listening that does know how um he was like this quite well-known poet um and a lot of his stuff was quite um it's like good i don't want to say life lessons because that makes it sound cheesy but life parables and you can really draw things uh from a lot of his work and so it just by the very nature of the work the movie is quite preachy like it's literally Mm. this guy voiced by um liam neeson that is traveling to the ocean to catch a boat uh and along the way he stops through towns and like gives these little stories to everyone and and each story is like a different animated segment right. um and there's some interesting visuals and stuff but it, it's a bit it's just a bit long-winded and a bit uh after a while it just becomes a little tedious i suppose yeah right um but um, i'm glad i saw it so it's definitely not bad but you have to be one of those movies you really have to be in the mood for, you know. Mm. I mean, I haven't seen this, if you couldn't tell, but um, I imagine these sort of anthology films are often a bit of a, a mixed bag. Like, they can be fun, but it's mm. often hard to really pull it off because the, the quality of the shorts are often super varied. Um, exactly. I assume it's, it was similar, a similar case for The Prophet. It was, yeah, yeah. Um, both in terms of the poetry they picked Mm. and how interesting that was and also the animation style i mean some of it was incredible to look at and then others were like it's like they held a competition to get someone Mm. in for this part like a very very basic but you know definitely worth checking out if if that sounds interesting to you cool so moving on folks uh the next movie i saw the next i headed to um i headed over to the uh 1630s in New England to see probably my favourite film of the festival and quite possibly my favourite film of the year so far called The Witch Uh, Uh, it's been getting a lot of buzz Uh, it's directed by Robert Eggers his first um, feature and it is really impressive this movie was just the kind of movie I love I was so, so happy I saw this, and I highly recommend it to anyone listening. Uh, I think it is getting more of a, a normal release later in the year at some point, in Australia anyway. I'm not mm-hmm. sure about international. Um, it's just so well made. It's um, It follows this family, uh, as I said, in the uh, 1630s, sort of like early colonial America, Um not super colonial. They've been there for a while, I guess, but whatever. Um, and they get uh, ostracized from their community for being too hardcore religious. And the right. father and mother are really obsessed with sin and staying away from sin. And uh, so they move out just to the edge of these woods, these really spooky woods, and set up um, a, a little house there with their three daughters. Um and uh, their baby son, and one day the baby son goes missing, uh, just out of nowhere. Uh, and there sounds sinister. A sinister presence in the woods uh, that takes the baby. That's not a spoiler. Uh, you you find that out straight away. And then what happens is <laughs> no, <laughs> um, uh, it, you know that's kind of the setup, and then the family slowly unravels and starts to blame each other. And uh, there's all these, all this interesting. really interesting thematic stuff about they're so obsessed with evil and sin. Did they bring this upon themselves, or is it just bad luck? And there's all this kind of religious mm. stuff going on. So it's really, really meaty in terms of the themes, but 
but just on a pure visceral level, there's a dread to the movie that reminded me of things like The Exorcist, where it just feels like there's a grossness to the film, you know, like an, the film itself has this evil presence. And you see there's, uh, I don't want to say too much, but there are sequences with a witch. I'll, I'll say that. I, I don't think that's a great surprise that mm. I just, I've never seen stuff like it. And it, it's so, for the most part, really subtle and just horrific, horrific stuff. It doesn't shy away. And not in a like a gory, over the mm. top way, just like, I don't know. It's like there's an evil threshold that you can take and this just keeps pushing it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not so much gore. It's just like, um, this just stuff, the vibe, the, the vibe, the stuff that, <laughs> yeah, the vibe it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to put into words. It's just, it's just really, really effectively made, um, on every level. It, it, it invokes Kubrick quite a lot, I think wow. in, in its composition and it's the sound design with the music. It's just, um, I can't, yeah, I can't praise That's it. That's high praise, I, John. High praise. I don't want to, you know, get anyone disappointed when they finally see it. Yeah, I know. So. My expectations have suddenly gone through the roof. So, <laughs> uh, no, that sounds that sounds awesome. That uh, sounds like it'd be right in my wheelhouse as well. Yeah, and I think um, maybe we could do a, a, full a, a, full, a full episode. I'd love to do a full episode on it when it comes out. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe we can uh, pencil that in a little later in the year. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Do you think it's like often, um, particularly in a film festival setting, uh, it's easy to sort of get swept up in the in the vibe of things and certain mm. films. I mean, it's happened to me uh, where, especially when you're being immersed in a lot of arty sort of stuff, and then you sit down mm. and you see something that's that's solid, but it seems mm. it, it 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 seems bigger than it actually is. Do you think that there's a a, a danger that this might, you might be because it, given the context that you saw it in, it, it might have seemed more impressive than perhaps someone that's coming at it from a different normal film viewing angle. Yeah, I I can I can see that a little bit. I mean, it mm-hmm. is it's a slow burn for the mm-hmm. middle section of the film, um, and there's really interesting thematic stuff going on there. But it, the scares take a bit of a backseat at that point, mm-hmm. and so I can imagine seeing it outside of that mindset that you might be. Some people might be bored in that middle area, right. um, and there are there is some stuff that happens in the third act where it gets a bit crazy. That I'm not sure if it's too much or not. Um, mm. uh, obviously, I won't say any more, but um, that's why I'd really like to do a, a full episode yeah. on it. I think. Interesting. That sounds good. Mm. Very cool. Okay, next we've got the. Uh, animated feature called Song of the Sea. Another one that seen, I've man. seen, yes. Yeah. yeah so why don't you, you talk about, oh, what, about why this? Why don't I talk first? about this? Um, yeah. I, I really like this film. Um, I liked it a mm. lot. Uh, I It's made by the same filmmaker who I have uh, blanked on that made The Secret of the Kells. Uh, Tom Moore. Yes, uh, which I haven't seen, but I know The Secret of the Kells got uh, um, a lot of good <clears> buzz <throat> when that came out a few years ago. Uh, mm. So I, I had reasonably high expectations going into this, and it, it, it this met them completely. I was so impressed by how uh, sort of deeply it dives into the subject of grief and loss for this family and children and how they deal with that. Um, it, in a way, it kind of reminded me of good Pixar storytelling. Mm. Um, mm. I mean, I guess it's sort of thematically a little similar to inside out but th- this is a much more somber film and it doesn't have the same sort of bubbly joy no. and fun that some of the pixar mm. stuff has but but i like that i like that it was bold enough to kind of really just double down on what it's like to lose a parent and what you know that does to a family um mm. but that's not to say it's like a, a super tough film to watch it's no. beautifully animated yeah um and it's kind of like this fable that mm. is is a fun watch um, but while dealing with very weighty subject matter at the same time. Yeah. Um, but what, what did you think? Did you yeah. did you hate the film or were you, mm. are you on board as well? No, yeah, I, I absolutely loved this movie. This is another one of my mm. favourites from the festival. I think um, I agree with everything you said. I think, uh, you know, there is all that thematic stuff about grief, but the fable side and the kind of Celtic lore stuff mm. is really, really interesting. Um 
And I, I just really enjoy that sort of storytelling, you know, where mm-hmm. there's this kind of history behind it, um, folk tales that have been passed on for like generations and generations. Um, Especially something like that, like like you said, the Celtic stuff that's not mm. that hasn't sort of penetrated mainstream media very no. much. Like it's all quite new and yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, it feels original and fresh. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I totally agree. The the other. Uh, I guess reference point I'd bring up is it reminded me quite a bit of Spirited Away, and um, yeah, actually, you know, there's that's a strong the kind of Ghibli feel to it um, in all mm-hmm. the right ways. I think, um, yeah, it, it, and it's just one of the best looking movies I've seen this year. Like the art, again, it's it's a style that you don't see very often, and we sh- we sh- haven't even said that it, this is hand drawn two D animation, yes, which yes. is so nice to see on the big screen since none of the major Hollywood studios do it anymore. Um, and the design itself, aside from the fact that it's hand drawn, is just beautiful. The backgrounds are really stylized, as are the characters, and it just—it's fantastic. You could pause at any moment yeah. in this movie and like take a screenshot and hang it up on your wall. It just looks great. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so after after Song of the Sea, what did you tackle next? Uh, what was next? On next the list? up. We've got the uh, documentary, The Nightmare. Ah, see, I want to see this. This is on my list of things to check out this Mm, year. mm. Yeah, I was very excited to see this. Um, Directed by Rodney Asher, his second documentary, Mm -hmm. uh, and his first one being Room 237, which Mm -hmm. is sort of an examination of all the crazy crackpot theories about Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, um, which I thought was really and a really interesting documentary and the way it was made was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was really excited for the nightmare for that purpose. And also because the nightmare is about sleep paralysis, um, which is this just such a fucking freaky concept, horrific concept of, (laughs) I'm sure a lot of people listening probably experienced or know someone who has that you wake up in the middle of the night uh, and you're conscious and your eyes are open, but your body's still asleep sort of. And so you can't, mm. and you're paralyzed, you can't move. Um, and this is often accompanied by visions of dark figures standing in the room watching you. And that's a very universal thing that happens. And I mean, just saying that, you kind of get chills, right? Yeah, it's it. gross. It's such a scary <laughs> so thing. So creepy. Uh, and the movie really just focuses on retelling the worst of those stories. You know, they <laughs> find people that are really bad sufferers of this that get it frequently and it affects them in their daily life um they don't want to go to sleep because of these well the way they describe them is like these demonic beings that visit them at night um so it's it's had yeah it's it really scared me it really scared me (laughs) that that kind of shit freaks me out and i i haven't experienced sleep paralysis but my wife sophie has and she's had a couple of weird things happen and it's just uh it's, it's something i really don't want to happen to me <laughs> um yeah Oof. but you know the movie's been a bit uh 50 50 in terms of reception because it it kind of leans very heavily on a supernatural explanation which oh interesting. you know there there is a scientific explanation which is mm. very solid i think but the people in the movie are so affected by what happens to them that they can't accept that and so interesting. they start to theorize about what could actually be happening to them in in more of a pseudoscience supernatural way so do you feel like the actual filmmaking sides with that yeah it theory? does it does right. yeah it's not it's not a balanced documentary at oh, all. That's and so disappointing it's a little disappointing they have one one girl that they talk to who talks about the science but they hardly ever cut to her really they focus a mm. lot more on these people that have other religious or supernatural exp- explanations which are really interesting to hear but it doesn't balance it out very much. That almost, to me, I mean, I haven't seen the film, so I can't judge, but it seems like that is almost a um, cynical uh, way to almost market the film as a horror film. Well, it like definitely, if you have a scientific explanation yeah. to it, it, it removes some of that inherent scariness, whereas if you push a demonic angle, then it's absolutely more easily freaks audiences out, I think, yeah. that are susceptible to that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And... um the director has said he wanted to make a documentary that is a horror movie. So that right, that was okay. a very intentional thing. And it's shot, uh, the reenactments are shot like horror movies, like quite filmic. 
but at the same time, very, uh, uh, it's hard because they really worked for me. I found the reenactments quite frightening, but a lot of people, we went with some friends and they were like, they looked so hokey because you can tell it's like a guy in a suit and they're on a set. Yeah, right. But uh, there's something about it that worked for me. It's It was a stylistic choice, I think, to make them feel very, like a 90s reenactment almost. It's hard to yeah, describe, right. but um, you can see, you can at one point it even shows you the set they're on and like pans around. Um, All right. So it's, you know, it's not perfect, but I just find uh, this guy, Rodney Asher, like his, his subject matter is so interesting now, you know, two mm. films in a row that I'm really excited. I hope he keeps pushing these weird little documentaries. Mm. Um, so I would recommend people see yeah, cool. this, but I can't guarantee that you'll like it or even be scared by it. I think it really depends on how open you are to being scared, supernatural stuff. Or um, mm. if you know or have experienced sleep paralysis. Yeah. I mean, I find the concept super fascinating, but more mm. from a scientific mm. aspect. than because I, yeah, I feel like I might be annoyed by this film hearing your explanation of it now. <laughs> yeah. I think you might be too, Matt. But, but yeah. <laughs> see, I really want you to I still want to see it. I yeah, still want to see it. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, yeah. And the thing about the thing about it is, though, like, that gets me and keeps me awake at night is that even, even the scientific explanation, which I firmly believe in, like the experience is real mm. to you at, in that moment. And I just don't yeah. want that. I it don't still want... would be a horrific thing to go through. Even if yeah. you know, retrospectively, it wasn't anything exactly. demonic. Yeah. And it's still not a fucking pleasant thing to wake up to, I guess. Yeah. I don't want to wake up with some being like standing over the bed. That's just, uh, <laughs> terrifies me uh okay next up uh and thanks for everyone that's still listening <laughs> all two so apologetic well i just yeah i hope people have seen a few of these to keep them interested you know? but i still think it's interesting especially for certain films that you perhaps aren't gonna see then you almost don't you this is your entry point into it do you know what i mean like yeah. i'm not going to see it but i can at least listen to these guys talk about it because i'm never going to get the chance myself at least yeah, that's kind that's of true. for me because yeah, i yeah. don't like listening to stuff until i've seen it but if i know i'm not going to see it then i'll like, listen to it yeah that's a good point thanks matt uh so next up we've got the film dope which uh, all right it's a bit of an indie darling at the moment it's mm. good reviews yeah, good buzz uh, about that one. Good buzz, exactly. Um, I was pretty disappointed by this movie, actually. Mm, interesting. Um, um, probably because I had heard that this was getting like pra- praised a bit at other film festivals and, and things like that. Um, I had relatively high expectations. And knowing yep. that it's sort of about these geeks that get caught up in a in some drug, nasty drug business. Uh, mm. I, I don't want to say too much because there are yeah, some... I actually like, didn't even know that's what it was about. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Right. Um, and it, <laughs> mixed in with that, they've tried to put a bit of a coming-of-age thing in there as well. And uh, there's some racial stuff as the the main characters are African-American. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but it's See, just... That all sounds pretty good so far. Yeah, so, but... yeah the, the ingredients are all there. And look, it's not a bad movie. I just think... Uh, it's a bit clunky and it's a bit mm. the pa- the pacing's all over the place and it kind of f- it doesn't know what sort of movie it wants to be. I mean, at some points it's like a wacky drug sex comedy, and then at mm. other times there's quite serious um, racial stuff addressed literally to camera, um, where the movie like totally halts and sort of ha- has something to say, which I'm not against, uh, but it just isn't handled in a very efficient or smooth way it's just yeah, it's yeah. like you can see the pieces um yeah. I, I don't know if i i think if you're into indie movies and um you know it follows that that sort of all the cliches for lack of a better word you know of an indie movie with like quirky side characters and uh all that sort of thing um so i, I, I it's not terrible i'd still recommend if that sounds interesting, if the synopsis sounds mm-hmm. interesting to you, and you specifically, Matt, I think you'd enjoy it, but you wouldn't love right. it. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll was, lower my expectations. Yeah, I think that might help, actually. Um, yeah, it just doesn't... 
yeah, I don't know. It's a bit a bit confused, I think. Interesting. So, like, you know, um, to play devil's advocate a little bit, mm. uh, at least uh, a confused film that's trying new things can be more interesting than something that, you know, is just rehashing cliches. That's, so, that's uh, yeah. very, very true. And I guess I should disclaimer that over all of these because... You know, you're lucky to get to go to a film festival and see movies that are original, really. Mm, um, yeah. It just doesn't happen that much in the mainstream cinemas anymore. So uh, thank you for bringing that up, Matt, and making me sound like an idiot. <laughs> uh, so the last one we've got here is uh, a movie uh, very similar in its buzz uh, to Dope, yeah. and that's uh, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. Yeah, another indie darling that everyone seems to be championing. It won a few, like, Sundance Awards or something, I think. Yes, it did. A lot of, a lot of positive buzz for That's it. That's right. Uh, it's another uh, teenage, quirky drama comedy. Um, mm-hmm. This time we're following uh, this uh, guy in high school called Greg, who's uh, very detached and sarcastic, and he's sort of forced to become friends with a, a girl who has cancer. Um, mm-hmm. And they form an unlikely bond, and uh, you just see their relationship grow over the course of the movie. Um, this is this I like this more than dope, um, but mm-hmm. I also felt like this was a little bit of a mess. Um, I think this was almost too formulaic in terms of like indie movies for yeah, me. Yeah, interesting. If it had quirky side character the parents are quirky the dad stays at home and like eats weird exotic food all the time you know they make uh the main character greg and his friend make swedes of classic Mm. art house movies and you you see like 50 of them and after like a couple of them the joke kind of gets old but it's like they've got a point to prove about how many art house movies references they can shove in um yeah, um, and so that stuff just gets a bit overpowering over time for me. I think it's a good movie, uh, but it's just not great. And some people are saying it's great, and I disagree. Yeah, uh, hearing you describe that, actually, I, I've not seen the film, but I saw it's starting to get um, trailered quite heavily here in, okay. London, in front of a lot of films I've been seeing. Yeah, I um, mean, I had no idea it had that kind of sweeted remade film aspect to it mm. and that was an instant turn off for me yeah and i know exactly what you mean about seeing those trailers it just seems to be hitting every single indie mm. quirky indie cliche like with a fucking sledgehammer and yeah. hearing you describe it like that makes me i i almost think i'm gonna hate this film <laughs> <laughs> like given the the, yeah, the way the trailer plays and hearing you describe what it's like, I don't know. Mm. It's almost, I don't know. It's almost something cynical about it. I feel like, I, again, I haven't seen it, so maybe I'm misreading it based on the trailer. But it feels like it's it's trying really no, hard to hit certain yeah, things. Yeah, I think, yeah, there is something slightly cynical about it when you look at it that way. Definitely, I think um, mm. it really hits those points, and um, I don't know. It it pretends it isn't like there's voiceover stuff that says if this was a normal movie things would happen like this see but, that annoy even you know what i mean you say that annoys me that that would be in the like i can imagine sitting in the cinema and being annoyed by that voiceover. <laughs> yeah because <laughs> that's in the trailer as well and it annoyed oh, me there you in the go. trailer yeah. yeah yeah so yeah i think i think you would feel the same as me i mean it's not it's not i wasn't sitting there hating it but i mm. i recognize a lot of the tropes in it and mm. um I was sort of, by the end, I was ready, definitely ready for it to go, but I didn't want to spend any more time with these slightly obnoxious <laughs> characters. Mm, uh, I guess having just really ranted against it, against a film I haven't seen, um, uh, for something like this, if it has a big heart and mm. it's, it's sort of sweet enough, it could yeah. perhaps carry me through. Did it have was did it have a, 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 a sweet, it, warm core that, no, that helped? No, I think... No. It, it, oh, um, okay. It, it tries to. It really tries to. And obviously there's a cancer storyline there. And mm. um, that is that is meant to be the emotional center and this friendship that occurs between these two characters. Um, but there's a lot of, I don't know. I, I didn't feel it. There's a lot of talking about how close they are and talking about mm. the 
themes of their characters, but not a lot of showing from what mm. I felt anyway. Yeah. It's like, you're always so cold and detached. There's that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, right. yeah. just show that. Like the, the, yeah. char- the character <laughs> can be act. like that. Cold and detached. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. So I, I don't, I didn't hate it. I just think yeah, it's just another indie movie is what I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. I'll still probably check it out, but very, very much lowering my expectations. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I was really lucky this, this myth, uh, I didn't see anything that I really, really hated. Um, so everything That's that good. we've talked about tonight, I think, is worth watching in some some form. So, yeah. Um, that's good. And there was obviously some really massive highlights that I would recommend to you, Matt, and to our dear listeners. Very cool. So it was The Witch and and Song of the Sea were the, the top picks for you? Yeah, I'd say they're the top picks. I think The Overnight's up there oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, they're probably the best three of the lot. And uh, they're probably three that are quite easy to find, um, yeah. which is good for listeners. I think so, yeah. Um, as we said, The Witch is going to get a more of a bigger release. Um, mm. Song of the Sea will be on Netflix or something at some point, I'm yeah. sure. Um, yeah. And same with The Overnight, without a doubt. So yeah. um, keep an eye out for those, definitely. Yeah, and hopefully we can do a little, uh, a little, a big full episode on the witch in uh, a coming, coming yeah, show. Yeah, that would be great. There, there is a trailer out, so we can. Um, we can oh, get very on, cool. We can get on that. Yeah, Matt. we should do that. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Cool. Well, that's uh, our little roundup of. Uh, yeah. Myth. Thanks for giving us a summary of your experiences, John. Well, I hope the uh, very I hope it was okay. I hope it was okay, <laughs> guys. It's hard to, uh, you know put your headspace in like 10 movies in a row or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was a good, good little festival and, um, yeah. Yeah. Makes me jealous that I wasn't there to, uh, to attend. Yeah. So you're oh, the maybe we can fiend. do a recap when I see that go to the London film festival, you know, yeah. October, November. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Cool. Cool. Well, All um, right. yeah, it's, thanks for listening to this little bonus episode, guys. It's, uh, bit of an informal one but we like doing these every now and then well it's the, like the second one we've done but uh you know <laughs> it's, it's fun to do something a bit different it yeah. is yeah i agree so we'll uh we'll see you on the next episode thanks for listening